are ready to get things underway here at Rent One Park. Leading off for the Marion, center fielder number eight, Justin Massengale. Everybody set, umpires are ready to go. Game three umpires, plate umpires, Tim Walker at first, Terry Ray. As the first pitch is missed outside, ball one. At second base, Steve Pritchard. And at third will be Shane Petrie. Second pitch from Ramos is low for ball two. Massengale looking at a 2-0 count to start things off here. Top of the first of the third game here of this series as that pitch is in there for a strike. Two and one now to Justin Massengale. Dimensions here at Rentland Park, if you haven't seen it before, as Massengale ties in to one, lines it toward left field, and it's caught by Montelongo out in left field. So a long fly ball out for Justin Massengale to start things off as he flies out to left field. Coming up next, that's second baseman number five, Vinny Rushing, who will hit from the left side here at Rentland Park. The dimensions are 320 and left. They are 400 to center field, 375 to right center, and then 325 down the right field line as Ramos pitch is fouled off by rushing. Crowd starting to fill in here at Rent One Park. Temperatures are going to be fantastic for night baseball. With You're going to make your way out to watch as rushing fouls off Next pitch, he's down 0-2. There's an 8 o'clock game coming up here at Rent One Park. And that's going to feature the Southern Illinois team taking on the team out of Mexico as Ramos' pitch gets by the catcher, runs the count to 1 and 2, and immediately following the game, as is a tradition here at Rent One Park on Friday nights for baseball, will be a fireworks display uh, here at the ballpark. The one, two count is outside, two and two, with one out. And Michael Ramos, he asked for a new baseball. Baseball's at a premium here in this Colt World Series. As a matter of fact, if uh, you get a foul ball, since there's not an unlimited supply of baseballs, if you return the foul ball down to the Visit SI table here at Rent One, you'll get a $10 gift card from Dick's Sporting Goods. So kids, you could rack up some money if you're chasing foul balls here at Rent One. Counts two and two to Vinny Rushing, second baseman for the Marion team. The Marion is the, Marion is the host team. There is a Southern Illinois All-Star team as rushing swings on an inside curveball and misses for the second out here in the top of the first. There's a Southern Illinois All-Star team that will be playing in the next game. That should be around 8 o'clock tonight. Two down here at top of the first for Marion. Kanan Dilde steps in from the left side. Where's number 10? He's going to be the starting pitcher for coach Garrett Elders and this Marion squad. One strike as Dilde lines it toward the left. Is it going to be fair? Falls just inside the line, up the third base line. Dilde rounds first, makes his way to second. He's going to be in there with a stand-up double to start things off for the host team from Marion. Kanan Dilde with a double. for Marion. Ball fell about a foot fair up the third base line, bounced off the sidewall. The left fielder had a problem picking it up cleanly and that allowed Dilde to uh, ease into second base. So cleaning, hitting cleanup, left fielder, number 11, Parker Holland, he'll hit from the right side. As catcher Garza goes out and talks to his pitcher, Michael Ram Ramos. Ramos is ready to go. Parker Holland steps in, the ball gets away, and that's going to allow Dilde to advance to third on the pass ball. 
So Marion has their first runner at third base. Great opportunity to get on the board here early in this game. For Marion. One ball, no strikes. Parker Hall in the batter. Dill Day standing on third. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Big swing from Parker Holland. Trying to get all of that one. Missed it, though. A little bit high. Ball about shoulder high. One ball, one strike, two outs. Swung on again and missed. Parker Holland trying to win it all right here in the first inning. Quick pace so far by Ramos. He pitches. Ball's grounded towards second. Bandit gets it, tosses across to, or excuse me, Ramirez gets it over to first to Sanchez for the force out. Play goes 4-3, so no harm for Marion in the first inning. We'll be back, bottom of the first. Coming up, it'll be Brownsville, Texas. You're watching the 2018 Colt World Series. Welcome back to Rent One Park. It's Dave McKenzie, where we're at the in the bottom of the first inning. And... Uh, Brownsville, Texas, their first time to the plate. Leading off is going to be their center field center fielder, Rafael Capistran Jr. He hits from the right side. Starting pitcher, Kanan Dilde, is Capistran Jr. fires fouls it off to the right. The decisions committee for this game include Mr. Randy Crompton, Stephanie Allen, and Denny Doyle. If there are any questions that come up, they'll be the ones to answer as Capistran swings and misses. He's down 0-2 here in the bottom of the first. He wears number seven on his back. Nice jerseys, blue jerseys with big letters on the back. I love seeing that. His pitch is high. Count one and two. Marion in red jerseys with white lettering. Capistran looking at his one and two pitch. Call the ball behind the plate, Tim Walter. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung right, Allen, and lined right up the middle as Capistran gets a single clean as well. And he makes his way toward first base. Designated hitter, number two. Herberto Garza steps in to the right side, wears number two, looks down toward head coach Fernando Torres for the signal. Steps in, Capistran gets his lead at first. Dilde with the pitch, he throws actually to first base to check on Capistran Jr. He gets back in safely. Rent One Park, beautiful facility, glad to be able to host this 2018 Colt World Series. Dilde's pitch inside, one and nothing. One and oh here in the bottom of the first. As Garza looks down, gets the signal, points to the right. Is he calling his shot? I don't think so. Here's the pitch. Lines it on the ground. Third baseman, Vanicky can't come up clean with it, so it's going to be an infield hit for Garza. Advances Capistran to second. Are they going to rule that an error as Vanicky kind of pulled his head up, took a high hopper, reaches on an error. E5, so batting now is Darren Ramirez, second baseman from the left side. So two on, the first two reach for Brownsville, Texas. They call themselves the Prospects, which makes sense for Texas. Dilday's 0-1 pitch on the way. Bunted up the left field line. That's a good bunt. It's going to move everybody up, and Ramirez is going to be safe as Capistran slides into third. Garza makes his way towards second, and now Darren Ramirez finds himself with an infield hit. Bases are loaded for the cleanup hitter, number 22, Emmanuel Garza. So, Brownsville looking to set the tone early here as the first three have reached. Garza at the plate. He bats cleanup. Here's the pitch. 
He fouls it off just to our right. And faces an 0-1 count coming up next. Pony League Baseball, protecting our nation's youth. Been around forever. Well, not forever. Since 1951. It was founded by Lou Hayes. He was a sports editor of the Observer Reporter newspaper in Washington, Pennsylvania. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Lined into the gap right field. That's going to bring everybody home because it's going all the way to the wall. Garza rounds first. Capistran scores. Garza scores. Ramirez scores. Three runs on the stand-up triple by the cleanup hitter, Emmanuel Garza. And quickly, it is a 3-0 lead by this Brownsville squad from Texas. Third baseman, Alberto Maldonado, number 14. He's the next one to hit. So Garza stands on third. Nobody out here in the bottom of the first. Cannon Dilde, the pitcher, getting roughed up early here. First one a little bit high, ball one. Pony League was formed, in which was meant to be a transition for kids 13 and 14 that wanted to move up from the Little League Baseball. So that's why uh, Pony League was organized. And by the end of the second season, 1952, there were 505 teams from 106 different leagues around the country. And now it has played worldwide. 500,000 players in all 50 states of the U.S. and over 50 countries play Pony Baseball now. The 2-1 pitch to... Maldonado misses outside, runs a count three and one. Here in this tournament, 10 teams taking place in the double elimination tournament. tournament rather, the Brownsville is the South Zone champion. The Asia Pacific team just won the previous game. That was uh, Seoul, South Korea, as they knocked off Greensboro, North Carolina, five to four in the previous game. You have the European champion, the defending champion, um, Netherlands, as Maldonado rips one down the left field line. That brings home Garza, and Maldonado gets an RBI as he uh, drives in Emmanuel Garza. So now it's 4 0, still with nobody out. And head coach Garrett Elders makes his way to uh, the pitching mound to talk to his starter, Kanan. Day. So the Marion team getting hit early here in the first inning, down 4-0. Four, four straight runners have scored. An RBI single for Herberto Maldonado. Jose Bonda steps in to the right side. Jose wears number nine, plays right field for Coach Fernando Torres as Kanan Dilde is ready to throw. A little bit outside for ball one. Outfield playing, playing straight up. You have Holland, Massing, Huring in the outfield, and then Vanneke, Kofer, Rushing, and Dyer on the infield. The catcher is Trokey. The 1 0 pitch foul off to the right. Going to even the count at 1 and 1. The Netherlands got a bye into the second round, and they um, are waiting to see who wins this game. The winner of this will get to take on the Netherlands, the defending champion of last year's 2017 Colt World Series. Congratulations. You win this, you get to play the former champs. Um, also, Cabina, California, Corvina, California, got a bye into the next round, and they are going to be taking on uh, Korea tomorrow as a ground ball up the middle hit the short. 
play to second, flip on to first. They don't get the runner at first, but they do get the force out of Maldonado as that went 6-4. And uh, Jose Banda gets on first on the fielder's choice. One down. Renee Sanchez, Jr. steps into the box. Where's number six, plays first base. Dilday's first pitch is high for ball one. So we have one out now, four nothing. Brownsville, Texas with the lead here in the first inning. Sanchez looks at a strike inside part of the plate. Two outs, fielder's choice before Swing and a miss from Bonda. Two strikes, one ball, two strikes. Don't waste any time. They just get the ball and throw. Third pitch right down the middle. They strike out, they throw behind the runner to try to get him, but Sanchez strikes out looking. That's the second out of the inning. And I don't know what coach Gary Dolder said to Kanan Dilde. But it's worked so far. Two outs in a row, and Marlon Montalongo steps in. The left fielder wears number four, looks at strike number one from Dilde. There will be a bit of a break between the two, between these, this game and the final game of the night as the pitch is outside, and Bond is able to Scamper down towards second without a throw. Stolen base for Jose Banda. So we have two down. Ground ball towards short. Kofer gets it across. Gets his man, Dyer, nice dig at first base, and that ends the first inning. So, Brownsville, Texas. They wind up scoring the first, first four guys that uh, came to bat here in the first inning. They lead it 4 nothing. Top of the second is next. You're watching the 2018 Colt World Series. And uh, Marion sends up their number five hitter, first baseman, Michael Dyer. Michael in a practice game. Watched him on uh, Monday night. Two local teams had a practice, couple of practice games here at Rent One Park to get ready. As the count now 2-0 and o to Michael Dyer. Number 18 from the right side looks at ball 3, 3-0 three from... Michael Ramos, the pitcher for Brownsville, Texas. Here's the pitch outside. They're going to walk him on four straight. Really how you want to start an inning after your team gives you four runs in the bottom of the first. And that's exactly what Garza, his catcher, I think, is saying to him. Settle down just a little bit. We got you. So Michael or Riley Kofer. We'll step in for Marion, the shortstop, where's number two. Bats from the right side. Dyer is at first. Michael Ramos, the pitcher, from, from the stretch. As Kofer pops it straight up, but it's going to be back behind the screen as Garza came and gave it a look. But uh, couldn't climb through the screen to get it, so it's foul. And Riley Kofer gets another opportunity with one strike. So far in the game, Marion no runs on one hit, one error. Four runs, four hits for Brownsville. As that pitch misses, it evens it up, one and one. If you would like to make your way here and watch the game live at Marion at Rent One Park, tickets, single-day tickets are just $8. It's for all the games that day. 
for eight bucks if you would like a ticket for the whole tournament that will run through Wednesday of this next week. You can get a all access pass for $25, which is the best deal. Concession stands are open and the field looks fantastic. If you've not ever been to Rent One Park, it is a fantastic facility. 3,400 chair seats. Also, we'll seat 2,000 over in the lawn section. There's a hot corner entertainment plaza, three concession stands. There's a 10 hole mini golf course in center field. Fun zone for the kids with inflatables that they can play on. Suites, banquet facilities, we got it all. We invite you to come by, check it out if you haven't been to rent one park. 2 1 count now on Kofer. He steps back in, but they check it first, throw across. And Dyer is able to get back in there. Kofer wears number two. Hits from the right side. Pitch from Ramos outside. Oh, he gets the call from Tim Walter. So it's two and one now on Kofer. Dyer gets his lead at first. Ramos fires. A little bit high. Runs it full. Nobody down here in the top of the second inning. The pitch on the corner, strikeout for Ramos of Riley Coffer, and Coffer was just looking. It was close, but that's the first out here in the top of the second. Catcher number 12, Ryan Trokey, steps in to the right side of the batter's box. Ramos, he has two strikeouts so far in this game. Dyer gets his lead. Trokey swings and misses at the first pitch, 0-1, with one out. The 0-1 pitch, bit high, one and one. Slight breeze blowing from right towards center. One one pitch misses two and one now. And manager Fernando Torres is slowly making his way toward the pitcher's mound. There are four games today. This is game number three of four. There will be four games coming up on Saturday. They're going to start at 9.30 tomorrow morning. Then there will be four games on Monday. Excuse me, Sunday. Three on Monday. Two on Tuesday. And maybe three on Wednesday. So 20 games over the course of five days here at Rent One Park. Plenty of time for you to get out here. As far as the field set up, it's 90-foot base paths, normal size field, 60 and a half feet from the pitcher's mound. And I believe the pitch count had been hit for Michael Ramos. So that's why he's making a switch. And now throwing is... Number two, Umberto Garza. Now pitching for Brownville, Texas. Umberto Eduardo Garza. So Garza, number two, he's going to take over here in the second inning. There's uh, the pitching rules. All of these pitchers are on a pitch count. And uh, since they are 15 and 16 year olds, um, there's mandatory rest days. So if a pitcher were to go in, and let's say he were to throw 30 pitches, if he stops at that 30th pitch, then he can throw again tomorrow. There's no mandatory days of rest. But if you throw over 30 pitches, 
and you throw 31, then you are allowed to throw from 31 to 45. If you throw 46 pitches, you have to have two mandatory days off. If you throw over 60, you have to have three mandatory days off. So the league specifies exactly. It's not the number of innings like it used to be. These are the new MLB rules. Um, that uh, pony follows. There are two sets of rules. There are the pony baseball rules, and then the second set of rules fall under the 2018 Major League Baseball rule book. I have both of them right here. That's a lot of reading. But I can tell you my understanding of this new pitch count um, is that it's number of pitches. And there is people that, is, that are tracking the pitches. Um, the coaches are pitching it, so they, they don't want to, um, in this league, and we've already seen it today in the previous two games, there's a lot of pitching changes just to save your pitches so they don't have to have a day of rest. Ryan Trochey, number 12, steps in, fouls it off to the right, sees the count go to two and two. It's the third time today we've seen a pitching change take place when there's already a count on the bat batter, and it wasn't an injury that resulted in the change. So Trochey evens the count two and two as Garza, his pitch is on the way down the middle, line toward right field. In comes the right fielder, gets by him. It's going to go all the way to the wall. As uh, Trochey rounds first, he's got Kofer in front of him. He's going to have to slow up. No, they're going to try and score. Kofer, he makes his way toward home. Here's the throw. It's in time, but the catcher drops the ball, and Kofer is safe. And Marion is on the board with a stand-up triple from Ryan Trochey. Excuse me, I said Kofer scored. It was actually Dyer that rounded the bases. He had to wait up to see if that ball was going to be caught. And when he did, he had uh, Trochey right on his heels. But Trochey winds up at third with a triple. And Marion gets on the board here in the second inning. Brings in Keegan Huring, the right fielder, wears number 14. He hits from the left side. And swings and misses at the first pitch. So Marion is on the board. And uh, Michael Dyer was able to slide home. The catcher, the throw was in time. If he handles it, uh, Dyer is out, but he doesn't. And Dyer touches the plate with his hand as he slides in. So it's four to one. One run for Marion on two hits, one error. Texas has four runs on six hits, no errors. Here's the pitch from Garza. Just outside to throw behind the runner, and they get him. What a nice job by the catcher, Garza. He throws down to Maldonado, who puts the tag on Trochey, who had just wandered off just a little bit too far. That secondary lead um, he had gotten just a little bit too far, and he winds up getting picked off at third on a great throw by Emmanuel Garza. That goes to five for the second out here in the inning. So Hearing remains at the plates with two down. Now the bases are clear for Garza. Garza steps up onto the mound. Two down. The 2-2 two -two pitch inside and low. Runs it full. That's a big out for Garza, and a, just a fantastic play again by Emmanuel Garza. So I guess this is brothers, maybe, playing. Pitch and catch. Pitch swung on and missed. The strikeout for Roberto Garza. Back in Marion, Illinois at Rent One Park. My name is Dave McKenzie. As we head to the bottom of the second, batting for Brownsville, Texas, it's going to be the shortstop and the number nine hitter, Number one, Derek Ramirez. He hits from the right side. The pitcher for Marion is Dilde, and he hits Ramirez with the first pitch, and Ramirez shakes it off, trots his way down to first base. So back to the top of the order, and the man that got it started in the first inning for Brownsville, that is Rafael Capistran, the junior, the center fielder. As he uh, got a single to get things started, puts his batting gloves on, he's going to step back in to the right side. And 
Kanan Dilde prepares to throw. The left-hander steps to the left side of the rubber from the stretch position. Looks across at Ramirez. Derek Ramirez on first. Looks him back. Steps toward first and throws. Ramirez gets back in easily. Down at third base, or excuse me, first base. Four to one the score here. Bottom of the second. Texas chance to, to extend that lead as they get the leadoff man on and pitches outside for ball one. Winds have shifted just a little bit. Now it's blowing out to dead center. Just a beautiful afternoon and evening this afternoon. The pitch off speed is high for Dilde. Count is 2-0. and oh. Capistran looks down toward coach. Fernando Torres gets his sign. Dilde's pitch inside for ball three. If I remember right, Capistran went 3-0 and oh in the previous at bat. That's when he singled to lead things off. Here's the 3-0. Ball four, he walks. So Ramirez heads to second. Capistran heads to first on the base on balls. And the designated hitter, Herberto Garza. He's also the pitcher right now. He steps in. He reached on an error by the third baseman in the first inning. The pitch is swung on and missed. Two on here in the bottom of the second. Brownsville, Texas threatening again. Have a runner in scoring position. Here's the pitch from Dilde. Swung, drove right back up the middle on the ground. That is Ramirez. He's going to round third. He's making his way home. Here's the throw. It's in time. Now it's booted again, and Ramirez is able to score. And now it is five to one. As Gepistron winds up at third base on the single, and Garza gets a single, and he advances on the throw. The second baseman, number 33, Darren Ramirez. Darren Ramirez steps in. He had a single back in the first. The second baseman talks to his coach. So two runners in scoring position now. This could be a big inning for the Brownsville, Texas prospects. The left-hander, Dilde, from the stretch. Steps, throws, ball's driven up the middle, in the air, lined right to center. Massingale was there to get it. That's the first out for Marion on the fly ball to center field. And Emmanuel Garza will now hit. He had the triple back in the first to drive in three runs. He has three RBIs in the game so far, and it's just his second trip to the plate. The pitch from Dilde bounces away. Here comes the runner from third, Capistrani scores easily, and in behind him, Garza slides in to third on the throw. Manuel Garza is going to step back in. Now just a runner 90 feet away to his left. A single will drive him home. A wild pitch will probably bring him home. Here's the pitch driven in the air to center field. Massengale camps under it, gets it. Here's his tag. Here's the play at the plate. It's in time. What a great throw as they get Garza at the plate. Just a fantastic throw from Justin Massengale. Oh, they're saying he was safe. Oh, my. Oh, my. My bad. So now they appeal to third, and they say... That uh, Garza left too early. Van Eyck at the plate. I think I said Van Eyck earlier, but it's Van Eyck is at the plate as the 
Officials have to wait for a pitcher to get out to the bullpen. Van Eyck plays third base, wears number 15. This is his first time hitting in the game. It's the top of the third, and it's 6-1. to one. Texas on top of Marion. Marion scored the last inning. Michael Dyer rounding third, slides home to give Marion its first run of the game. First pitch is high for a ball. 2-0 to Van Eyck. Pitch is swung on and missed by Breyer. Count now two and one. Two one pitch in there for a strike, two two. So Marion was able to limit some of the damage there in the top of, or the bottom of the second. We're in the top of the third now, strike three as Van Eyck just looks at it. Knows he should have swung at that. Couldn't believe it was a strike. One down. And that's back to the top of the order as Justin Massengale steps in. He flew out to left field his first time up, but he just made a heck of a throw from center field to gun, or what I thought was gun down the runner at the plate. I thought the tag was there. As I think there were some of the Marion pitchers that were wanting to get out and warm up in foul territory just to the left. And the umpire said you can't do that as the first pitch to Massengale was outside for 1-0 count. The 1-0 pitch, a little bit high, Massengale turns his back toward it. 2-0 now. Sun starting to cast some shadows over the infield here at Rent One Park, right down the third baseline into foul territory. 3-0 as Ramos is a little bit wild here to start the top of the third inning. Sun still shining brightly from, say, shorts all the way into the outfield areas. All three outfielders standing in the sun. Here's the 3-0 pitch. A little bit low, and Massengale walks on four pitches. So that's going to bring up Vinny Rushing. Second baseman wears number five. He'll step into the left side of the batter's box. If you're watching here online, watching or listening, we appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying it. Good game so far, six to one. Texas leads Marion here in the third. Ramos pitch right down the middle in for a strike. Vinny rushing the last time he, or his first time up in the first inning, struck out, swinging. Here's the 0-1 from Ramos. Grounded up the middle. Is it going to get through? It does. Into center field. Massengale, he turns, makes his way toward third. Here's the throw. It's in time, but they say he got his hand in there, and Massengale slides in safe to third, rushing, heads into second right behind him. Nice base running by Justin Massengale. And Marion has something brewing here in the top of the third. That's going to bring up the pitcher, Kanan Delde, where's number 10. He had a double his first time up. So runners at second and third for Marion. Kanan Delde from the left side of the plate. The pitch from Roberto Garza. In there for a strike. No balls, one strike, one out. Pitches in for a strike, 0 and 2. Broto Garza came in in the second inning as the starting pitcher 
Ramos hit his pitch count. Swung on and miss as Dilday strikes out on three pitches. Struck out swinging. Two down. And Parker Holland, the next to hit for Garrett Elders and Marion. But it looks like another pitching change is coming for Coach Fernando Torres and his Brownsville, Texas prospects. Not a very big roster. I guess this Brownsville team, one of the biggest. I think he's going to leave. Actually, he's not going to make a change. He's going to leave Roberto Garza in to pitch. So that brings in uh, left fielder Parker Holland for Marion. Last time up, he grounded out to second. Drives this one foul straight back. You hear it hit the roof just above us. Will it come down to the crowd? Even the players from Holland have their ball gloves out. They're looking to see if this one returns. It does. But on the field, play continues. Here's the pitch from Garza down the middle. It's a little bit low. And Parker Holland. Looking at a 1-1 count with two down here in the top of the third. Six to one, the score. Texas on top of Marion. Marion, the host school. There's also a Southern Illinois All-Star team that will play tonight. That should be somewhere around 8 o'clock this evening. And after that game, stick around. We'll have fireworks here at Rent One Park. It's a Rent One tradition. 2-1 pitch driven into the ground by the pitcher, 3-1. and one. You can tell on that pitch he just overthrew, and Fernando Torres steps out of the dugout. Doesn't want to use a mound visit, but he says, ease up. He does, gets a curveball to... <laughs> was called a ball inside, and so Parker Holland walks. Bases are juiced for Marion. Michael Dyer singled his first time up. He scored later. So bags are juiced for Dyer. First pitch outside as catcher Garza frames it for Tim Walter. Still called a ball. The 1 0 pitch from Garza in there for a strike, one and one. Nice crowd here at Rent One Park. It's really filled in really, really well. So the ball comes straight back from Dyer. Lines the count one and two. More seasonable temperatures here at Rent One today as we saw the temperature get up to about 90. Game time here as Dyer gets hit. That's going to drive in a run. Ball hit him right on the left leg. So Massengale is going to come in on the base on balls. Rushing will move his way to third. Holland goes to second, Dyer heads to first, and that's going to bring in the shortstop, Riley Kofer, who was hit who last time up. He struck out on three pitches. They throw in behind um, Dyer, but he's able to slide back in as he got a big secondary jump. Nice play by Garza. I tell you what, this catcher, Emmanuel Garza, very impressive so far here early in this game as the ball bounces in. It stays right there around the plate. Player and the runners can't advance. But Emmanuel Garza wears number 22. He's a player, you can tell. Doesn't get rattled, not afraid to throw in behind. Kind of reminds anybody of a St. Louis Cardinal catcher? It's what he kind of reminds me of. Here's the 1-1 one, one count outside, 2-1. and one. 
Garza looks toward the dugout. Roberto Garza on the mound, continues to throw. Bases are juiced for Marion. Bounced in, 3-1. And I can bet you that Coach Fernando Torres will make a change if don't get an out right here. Because Marion is threatening to score some big. Ball four, walks in. Rushing is going to score. Holland will go to third. Dyer will go to second. Riley Cooper will go to first. And the coach is going out. From Texas, he's going to make a pitching change. Two runs in the inning, 6-3 to three the score as Alberto Garza hands the ball to coach Fernando Torres. Coming in from the bullpen will be the next pitcher. So there will be some defensive changes as Garza makes his way out, trades gloves with, I think, the left fielder. So Montalongo will come to the dugouts. Number 13 is the new pitcher, Jermaine Castillo, Jr. He comes in from the bullpen. Where's number 13? Number two, Roberto Eduardo Carter is now playing left field. So Carter moves to left field. Capistran stays in center. Banda in right. And then third base will be Montalongo. Shortstop, Derek Ramirez. Darren Ramirez is at second. And Sanchez, the first baseman. Garza is the catcher. And the new pitcher for Texas is Jermaine Castillo Jr., the right hander. Throws in the upper 70s on his warm-up pitches. We'll see if he warms up just a little bit more. But making his way toward the plate, that is going to be Ryan Trochey. First time up, he hit a triple to score Michael Dyer, the catcher for the Marion team. Wears the white helmet, solid white helmet, white pants, red shirt with white lettering. Wind blowing straight away. towards center field. Two down. Trokey steps in, digs in. Costello Jr. is ready to go with two outs. Bases are loaded. Catches the corner on the first pitch for strike one. That pitch 80 miles an hour from Costello. Pitch number two is on the way. Same spot, right on the corner. 0-2. Another 80-mile-an-hour fastball. He wouldn't throw it there again, would he? He does throw a, a strike, but it's hit foul by Trokey. Count remains 0-2. But he comes back to that same spot that he got the first two strikes on. Right at the knees, right on the black on the outside corner. Here's the pitch. Right in that same spot. Gets Trokey looking. And yes, he did. So there's three outs. Marion's able to get two more across as they score two. And now heading to the bottom of the third. It is six to three. Texas over Marion. It's the 2018 Colt World Series. 
Roberto Maldonado is up for Texas. He was part of that, or there was the appeal to end the, the uh, second inning. So Maldonado steps in, faces two strikes. New pitcher for Marion, it's Lucas Johnson. Where's number four? He just came in here in the bottom of the third. The pitch from Johnson, a little bit high, one and two. Johnson, just like the other pitchers, they don't waste any time. Steps and throws, curveball as Maldonado skies it towards short. And Kofer goes out, hits him in the glove, and he kind of lost his balance. He wound up on his heels. The ball hit on the heel of his glove and it hits the turf. So that's going to be an error that allowed Maldonado to score. It's going to be E6. <coughs> And Maldonado winds up on first base. Right fielder Jose Banda is steps into the plates for Texas. Last time up, Banda reached on a fielder's choice. Took a ball on the first pitch. Defensively for Marion, it's Holland in left, Dilde in center, Yuring in right, Massingale at third, Kofer at short, rushing at second, Dyer at first, Trochi still catching, and the pitcher, Lucas Johnson. Two balls, no strikes to Jose Banda, the right fielder. Bats from the right side. Lucas Johnson, the 2-0 pitch, hit on the ground, could be a double play ball, booted by the second baseman, and uh, nobody is able to get a hold of it as it was rushing that couldn't handle it. Then it was a shortstop Kofer that could have got it and tagged the bag. He couldn't. The ball just lays on the ground. And now two errors in a row on Marion allows Texas a good opportunity here in the bottom of the third. So we'll, that'll be an E4 on the second baseman from Marion. That's rushing. That's going to bring Rene Sanchez to the plate, the first baseman, number six. Hits from the right side. Two on now for Texas. Lucas Johnson, pitch. Curveball hangs up inside for ball one. The 1 0 pitch from Johnson. He works from the stretch. He's on the way. Driven towards center field. Line caught by Dilde, and they double off Maldonado, who took off for third. So Sanchez lines out to center field, and then it's eight to four to get Maldonado for the second out. Marion got a pinch hitter here for Marion Matalongo. As the throw down to second. Bonda trying to steal and is successful, gets the stolen base. Number 13 is Jermaine Castillo. And he's hitting in Montalongo's place. So no balls, one strike. As Castillo gets into it, it's caught 
by Holland for the third out of the inning. Flies out to left. And as we head to the top of the fourth, it is six to three, Brownsville, Texas prospects over the host team, Marion. Steve McKenzie back at Rentwin Park on a Friday night. This is the third game out of 20 that'll be played over the course of the next five days. Top of the fourth for Marion, the host team. Brian or Keegan Hearing leading off here in the fourth inning. Marion finds itself down six to three. They settled down. I think there was some nerves maybe early in that game. They scored two in the third. First time up, Keegan Hearing, he struck out swinging. As that pitch from Castillo in there for a strike. 1-1 one, one counts in the top of the fourth on the way. Bounces it in there for ball two, two and one. A lot of activities going on, and one of the really cool things that they do in Pony League is they have the Champions League game. Um, for those with disabilities at play, it's very awesome, and that is going to be on the 4th. That's tomorrow at 4.30 here at Rent One Park. It is a big deal, and uh, very excited to be able to watch that coming up tomorrow. First game tomorrow will be at 9.30 in the morning. What are you doing on a Saturday? Drink coffee? Come out, watch some baseball as the 3-1 pitch gets in there for a strike. And now Hearing is facing a full count with nobody on, nobody out. The pitch from Germain Castillo. Three-two pitch. A little bit outside, and Keegan Hearing earns a walk. He heads down to first base. And Briar Van Eyck. Number four, Lucas Johnson. Oh, number four. Forgot about that switch. So it's Lucas Johnson, the pitcher, hitting in the number nine slot now. Pitch running at first base for Mary Illinois. Number three, Felix Cross. So Felix Cross comes in for Yuring at first. Lucas Johnson at the plate, hits from the right side. One on, nobody out. Squares to bunt. Oh, they've got. Cross picked off. They've got him in a rundown as the catcher runs all the way out. Throws to the shortstop. He fakes, gets it to the pitcher. And they are going to grant. Cross second base. Was obstruction uh, as, the, as the defender came in behind him. He was running back toward first base and he ran into the defender. And you can't obstruct like that. And so they had tagged him out, but it doesn't matter. He was obstructed. And uh, so Cross catches a break. He stands at second in scoring position. And Lucas Johnson remains at the plate with an 0 1 count. Big break for Marion on that. As Castillo throws, Lucas Johnson gets the bunt down. That's going to move Cross over to third, and it does. A successful sacrifice from Lucas Johnson. That's what a good pitcher does. Gets that bunt down, moves that man over. Play goes 1-3 on the sacrifice. And so back to the top of the order for Marion with Justin Massengale. He steps in from the right side. Castillo's pitch is on the way. A little bit high. 1-0. Oh. 
Massengale, a heck of a ball player. He's made a couple of really good plays here this evening. Plus, he's fast. Jermaine Castillo's pitch swung on and missed by Massengale. Evens the count at one and one with one out here in. Top of the fourth inning. Marion down three, six to three. Line score right now, three runs on three hits, three errors for Marion. Texas has six runs, nine hits, no errors. As Massengale steps out, trying to throw off the timing of Mr. Castillo. Castillo throws, grounded to the left side, slow rower. First baseman picks it up, tags out Massengale, but it's enough to get cross home. And so Marion now has drawn within two runs. They scored two in the third. They actually scored one in the second, two in the third, one in the fourth. And stepping into the plates. Number five. Vinny rushing. So the play went three unassisted for the first baseman. That was Sanchez as this pitch is driven toward left field in the air. And it is Garza that steps under it and makes the catch. Right side, he's going to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Pitching for... Marion is Lucas Johnson. His first pitch gets in there for a strike. The 0-1 grounded toward third. Massengale with it. Throws over. Nice scoop by Cody Ushery, who just checked into the game. For Marion at first base. So that play went 5 3 for the first out. Top of the batting order, Rafael Capastran Jr. He steps in. First pitch is just a little bit low. One down, bottom of the fourth, outside for 2-0. and oh. As Capistron Jr., he singled in the first, walked in the second. He scored both times he's got on here in the game. He's batting here in the fourth for the third time. 2-0 counts. Pitch from Johnson, curveball in for a strike. 2-1 and one now. Everybody straight away in the outfield, straight up on the infield. Curveball misses, runs the count to three and one on Capistron. On deck, Roberto Garza, the pitcher. He stands in the on deck circle, the pitch outside, and that's going to be a walk to Rafael Capistron. So he's still two for two in the game. But he gets on base and just seems like one of those guys that makes things happen as Roberto Garza looks down toward the head coach, Fernando Torres, gets his instructions, cleans off the bat, and steps in on the right side of the batter's box. Capistron gets his lead at first. Garza's set in the box. Johnson. Lightly throws toward first, just to keep Capistrano honest over there. One down. We're in the bottom of the fourth. It's six to four. Texas on top of Marion. As the pitch gets by, the catcher, Trochi, comes all the way back. So now 
Capistron is in scoring position at second base. Garza's looking at a 2-0 count. Pass ball. Here's the pitch. Driven towards second. Scooped up. By rushing, throws over to Dyer to get the out. Two down now. Here in the fourth, and that's going to bring up Darren Ramirez. Number 33. Two down. A two hopper towards second. And rushing picks it up and slings it across. This ball driven in the air to right field. That's way over the right fielder's head. That's Dilde trying to run it down as Ramirez rounds first, heads towards second, on his way toward third. It's going to score one. And uh, Ramirez, Darren Ramirez, with a stand-up triple, no doubt about that, as he gets the RBI, driving Rafael Capistran home. Man, he got into that one in the air. Dilde was playing here at Route 1, it's probably about a mid, midway in the outfield, and that was right up the line. Long way for Dilday to run that down and gave Ramirez easy time to get into third as the pitch to Emmanuel Garza is outside for a ball. 1-0 to Garza. Now it's 7-4. to four. Texas with the back to the three-run lead as they throw down, see if they can uh, pick off Darren Ramirez at third. He's able to get that right hand back in on the bag. Two down here in the fourth. Emmanuel Garza at the plate, up on that line, crowding the plate. Pitch outside is misses. 3-0. and Does he swing 3-0 and here? Or does he look for the walk? What's the sign that Coach Torres gives? Says take it, and he does for a ball. And so now Emmanuel Garza is at first. Jaron Ramirez is at third. And in steps, third baseman Herberto Maldonado. Number 14, and I believe that Garrett Elder is the coach of Marion. It's about all he's going to let Lucas Johnson throw. Is he going to make the change? They're just having a conversation right now. Just giving some defensive instruction to his team. One of the assistant coaches from Brownsville giving some instructions to his team right next to home plate. And now everybody heads back to where they're supposed to be. So setting the stage, two, two outs. Herberto Maldonado, he singled in the first, scored or reached on an error in the third. Bats here in the fourth. Got runners in front of him, first and third. Two down, chance to get back to a four-run lead on a pass ball or any type of hit. As they throw over to first, Cars is able to get back in. Here's the pitch from Johnson, down low. Garza took off to steal the throw to second is picked off and they throw home to get Darren Ramirez for the third out here in the fourth inning. Nice job defensively by the Marion squad. That throw was cut off. They threw home and uh, Darren Ramirez picked off. So that went one, four, two. Kane and Dilde is the first to lead off here, the top of the uh, fifth inning. Reached on a double back in the first, struck out in the third. 
Hits from the left side. Castillo is still the pitcher for Texas here in the top of the fifth. One and one the count, Dave McKenzie with the stream here. And want to thank everybody with the Southern Illinois Miners, the production staff providing the cameras, the live stream. It's been a lot of fun today. Day's actually gone by very quick as they're working toward the end of this third game. Still one game left tonight. That should be 8 o'clock. Now, coming up here um, in between these two games will be the opening ceremonies. And all the coaches and uh, players for all 10 teams in the tournament will have a parade onto the field. There's going to be some remarks from Mayor Anthony Ranello, remarks from the Southern Illinois Miners, from Visit SI, from Pony. First pitch is thrown as the ball's in the dirt. Two and two the count. Excuse me, three and two the count. To Dilde here in the top of the fourth. And then... They'll have the national anthems from the United States and Mexico, and then we'll get under play in the final game of the night here at Rent One Park. Dilde looking at a full count. Here's the pitch from Castillo. Swung on and missed. And Dilde strikes out swinging for the second time in the game. He's one for three. That's going to bring Parker Holland to the plate. Parker back at the first, grounded out to second. He walked in the third. Made it all around to third. Wasn't able to score, though, in that third inning. As the pitch, first pitch to him is a little bit low. Checking the box score. Four runs for Marion. Two hits. Three errors. Texas seven runs, six hits, one error. As the 1 0 pitch is bounced in there, 2 0 now to Holland. Seems like the wind has picked up just a little bit. It's a pretty sight seeing all the flags out in right center field blowing, blowing toward left. The 2 0 pitch. Low for ball three. So the 3 0 pitch now to Holland, Parker Holland. The left fielder stands in there, in there for a strike, three and one. Three one pitch, ground on the ground to short. As uh, Ramirez slings across to Sanchez, they get Parker Holland by about two steps, six four, on the put out, and the second out here of the fifth inning. Time slipping away for Marion the host team in this tournament. Now, don't forget there is a Southern Illinois team that's going to be playing uh, in the game coming up against Mexico here at 8 o'clock. We'll have complete coverage right here on your live stream. In to hit Michael Dyer, the first baseman. Number 17. Pitch a little bit low, ball two. The 2-0 pitch from Castillo. Popped up right side. Pitcher comes over. He and the first baseman fight for it. The first baseman gets it, Sanchez, as he's able to get the glove on it. Renee Sanchez, and that's the third out of the inning. Pop up to third. So Mexico 
Sets down Marion one, two, three here in the top of the fifth. We're heading to the bottom of the fifth. Maldonado, Bonda, Sanchez all coming up next. You're listening and watching the 2018 Colt World Series. Welcome back to Brent One Park. Seven to four is the score as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. Alberto Maldonado will step in. The right side of the plate, Johnson is still throwing. Lucas Johnson still throwing for Marion. And a three run lead for Texas. The first pitch thrown behind Maldonado. He's able to jump out of the way. These guys playing in this uh, Colt World Series are 15 and 16 year olds. I guess the next step up from Colt would be uh, the Palomino League. That's 19 and under, 15 to 18. And then uh, finally the Thoroughbreds, 23 and under. All part of the Pony League and their softball uh, as well. That's all part of Pony League. The 2-0 pitch is hit on the ground foul up the left field line. Massingale gave it chase, but just out of his reach and foul. So the different divisions of Pony League include Shetland, Pinto, Shetland is six and under, Pinto eight and under, which is four through eight. Mustang is seven through 10 year olds. Bronco is nine through 12 year olds. Pony is 11 to 14. Colt is 13 to 16 year olds. And um, Palomino, 15 to 18. So, protecting our nascent youth, that is the purpose and the mission for Pony League Baseball. As Maldonado gets hit by a pitch, he takes his base. Pinch hitting for Brownsville. Looks like it's Brandon Matthew Bentecourt. Bentecourt, rather. That's what it looks like. Bentecourt steps in. Bentecourt. That's the best way to say it. He wears number three. Hits it on the ground to second. Double play chance for Marion. Get it at first. The throw is high. Bentoncourt pretty quick, and he's going to try and the ball is overthrown at first, and Bentoncourt slides into, uh, slips into second base. So he gets the base hit, and he's going to take second on the throw. And it went 4-6 on the put out at second to get small Donato. Rene Sanchez will be the next to hit. First baseman. So a runner at second. Texas threatening again here. First pitch from Johnson is a bit low for ball one. The 1-0, a little bit outside, framed nicely by Trochi, but doesn't get the call. So it's a 2-0 count to the first baseman from Texas. Swung around and missed, nice pitch. Pulled the string on that 71 mile an hour. Little change up. Sets the count at two and one. Shadows now have kind of crept over the entire infield out toward the left. Sun's still, still shining in the right fielder's eyes. The inside pitch is a ball. Three and one now to Sanchez. On deck will be Jermaine Castillo, the pitcher. Here's the pitch. 
Bound four. So J Sanchez walks. And Jermaine Castillo. Steele Jr., he's in there. The last time he came up, he flew out to center field. That was back in the third inning. And head coach Garrett Elder is out to talk to his team on the mound. Assistant coach talks to the Texas team right at home plate. Seven to four, the score. Everybody set, ready to go. Johnson still on the mound. Shortstop tries to sneak in behind Bentecourt. He's able to get back, and the pitch is inside for ball one. Hitting right now, number 13, that is Jermaine Castillo, the pitcher. The 1 0 pitch, driven on the ground. Sure, Massingale dives for it, makes it all the way to left field. Runner holds up at third, so Texas is going to have the bases loaded after the single by Castillo, and that's going to bring up Derek Ramirez, the shortstop. Was hit by a pitch back in the second inning. In the fourth inning, he grounded out to third. But the bases are juiced. Could blow this one wide open. With a couple of runs here, Johnson's pitch, a little bit outside, ball one. As we said, the opening ceremonies are going to be held in between games as before the final game of the night. Big swing by Ramirez. Doesn't connect, does get the count to one and one. Be a parade by all 10 teams. I can see around the other teams are in the crowd, setting down, enjoying a beautiful night for baseball here in Marion. The 1-1 one, one counts is good. And they throw behind the runner at first, who had wandered off just a little bit. That's Castillo. And uh, they're able to get him for the second out. Nice tag placed on there by Dyer. So two down. One ball, two strikes to Ramirez. Johnson can get out of this with little to no damage, but the ball's hit in the air toward left. That should be caught. And it is by Holland. So they do limit the damage. Welcome back to Marion, Illinois. Written one park, the home of the Southern Illinois Miners who are on the road tonight. They're in Windy City. Time for first going into tonight's action in the West Division of the Frontier League. If you're not familiar with Rent One Park, it is the home of the Southern Illinois Miners. Can seat nearly 3,000 here in the stadium, 3,400 3, chair seats. Also, over 2,000 can fit on the lawn seats around the park. Various other seating arrangements available. And Ole O'Leal is checking into the game. He's going to go to left field. Where's number 66? But not only the lawn seating, but there's the hot corner entertainment plasma where, plaza where you can get food, play games, watch the ball game up in the corner there. There's a mini golf course at Rent One Park out in center field. Great concession stands, the fun zone, suites available, banquet facilities, the Diamond Club, great place to watch a game, and uh, just a, a great atmosphere here. And the, we want to say thank you to uh, Pony, 
baseball and the Colt World Series for agreeing to come here after being in Lafayette, Indiana for many, many years, over 50 years. Um, and uh, looking forward to having this series here in Marion for many years to come. If you are looking to come out for single game, single day tickets, they're only $8 a day for all the games that day. There's going to be four more games tomorrow where you can buy a, a pass for all the games uh, for just $25. That's probably the best deal. Silkworm has um, souvenir shirts and hats available on the concourse. Great food, having a long, uh, good food here at the ballpark. First pitch is no good or outside. Castillo remains the pitcher, number 13, for Texas. Hitting here, Riley Kofer gets the count 2-0. Two, two pitches outside from Castillo. It is the top of the sixth inning, so only six outs for Marion to either tie this up or take the lead. Counts 3-0 now on Kofer. He hits from the right side. Here's the pitch. Catches the corner 3-1. Nice pitch. 75-mile-an-hour fastball. Enjoying the view from here in the broadcast booth at Rent One Park, right over the top of home plate. You can see everything from here. The 3-1 pitch is outside, so Kofer draws a walk. To lead things off here in the top of the sixth. That's going to bring up number 12, Ryan Trokey, the catcher. Trokey so far in the game. He tripled back in the second, struck out in the third. This will be his third, third appearance in the game at the plate. Marion needs some runs. They need three to tie. It's seven to four. Pitch outside. When you look at the scoring and the line score, four runs for Marion, three hits, four errors in the ball game. For Texas, seven runs on 12 hits. They haven't had an error here this evening. Seven to four as Texas sends a couple of players toward the bullpen. They kind of run back and forth between the dugout and the bullpen in right field as needed. So the count 1-0 and on Ryan Trokey. Trokey from the right side takes it high, hits him on his... I thought it hit him. It may have hit him on the hand, and that's part of the bat. And it's a foul ball. Maybe it didn't hit him. Count 2-0, and oh, apparently. Here's the 2-0 -oh pitch. A little bit high. Three and 0 oh. So you met Trokey's going to be taking on this one. As Kofer gets his lead at first, takes his secondary lead, pitches outside. And Trokey, he earns the walk. So back-to-back -back walks here to start the sixth inning. And the coach, Fernando Torres of Brownsville, makes a slow stroll toward the pitcher's mound. We'll take a break as well. 7-4, Texas over Marion.
No pitching change made there. So stepping in to hit is going to be Felix Cross. He came in as a pinch runner back in the fourth inning. He hits from the left side. Where's number three? Chokes up on the bat, a couple of inches. Little knock will score a run. Squares to bunt, pitches inside. They throw the ball down to third. They throw it down the line as it is going to be Kofer that comes all the way from second to score. And look at Trokey. He makes his way all the way to third. He's safe. Nice, aggressive base running by Marion. Kofer scores. And Trokey follows him around and winds up at third base, sliding head first into third. So Marion gets one of them back. It's 7-5. They're down two here in the top of the sixth inning. As Brownsville's had plenty of opportunity to put this Marion team away, they just haven't done so, and Marion's clawed their way back to within a couple. Cross is at the plate, hits from the left side, pitches on the outside corner, good for a strike. One to nothing, or excuse me, one and one the count, seven to five the score. In the sixth inning. Straight up 7 o'clock in central time. They throw back in to try to get Trokey, who little, just a little bit slow getting back to third. Went in standing up. It was close, but he did get that foot on the bag. Two and one the count, two cross. Here's the pitch. Grounded, short, short blocks it. They throw back behind, and uh, what a mistake. They should have went to third, or excuse to first. He tried to get the runner at third, but Trokey's able to get back in there, so cross. Um, Heads to first, and I think the manager from Texas is going to come out and argue the call. It looked like Trokey got his hand back in there. So, Cross... Fielder's choice, and he, he gets on on the fielder's choice. Not a lot of argument put up by the coach from Texas. So now runners at first and third, and we have a pinch hitter for Marion. It's number 30, 13. That's going to be Josh Griffin coming in to pitch for, excuse me, to pitch hit for Johnson. Josh Griffin. Josh wears number 13. And there's going to be a pitching change, I believe, now as uh, Coach Fernando Torres motions toward his bullpen. And Jermaine Castillo pitched a, a, a good game as he came in here. Let's see if we can get some uh, stats on him as he's thrown the most innings, I do believe, uh, for Texas. He went two and a third innings. The box score needs to update. He gave up two runs. There we go, it updated. Now, uh, Castillo went two and a third innings. Giving up two runs, one earned run, two, walked two, struck out two, and now throwing for Brownsville is number six. That's going to be Renee Sanchez Jr. in the pitch.
Back at Brentwood Park, it's Dave McKenzie. New pitcher for Texas, it's Renee Sanchez Jr. Where's number six? He's talking with his catcher right now. That is Garza. Runners at first and third for Marion. They've scored one here in the top of the sixth. They're down two now, seven to five. They've had four hits, five runs on four hits. They've had four errors today. Brownsville, Texas, seven runs on 12 hits. Josh Griffin is the pinch hitter for coach Garrett Elders. With nobody out, inside pitch, in for a ball. For Sanchez. Sanchez Jr., should I say. Five to four, excuse, seven to five the score. Five runs on four hits. That pitch catches the inside corner, evens the count at one and one. Here comes the 1-1 one -one from Sanchez Jr., a little bit high. And Garza looks back, the runner at first. That is Cross, Felix Cross. He's wanting to run. There's a runner at third. That is Ryan Trochi. So a couple on with nobody out. This is a great opportunity for Marion to maybe tie this game up this half inning. A little bit high, runs the count three and one. Garza steps out in front of the plate, chats at his pitcher. So, exciting stuff right here. 3-1 count is on the way. Catches the inside corner. Now runs it to 3-2, full count. That's going to give Cross a chance to take off from first. Gets his big lead, look for the throw over. He does take off and they've got him picked off. Cross left way too early. What are they gonna do? The pitcher tries to run down Cross between first and second. They have Cross held up and he's able to make his way back to first as no tag was put on. They thought they had him, but they missed the tag in the first place, first base umpire, Terry Ray says, you didn't get the tag. So Cross scampers his way back to first. Unfortunately, Marion wasn't able to get that run home, but he still does stand at third. So first and third. Josh Griffin is the batter. Nobody out, full count. Bounces it in there, and now the bases are loaded as Josh Griffin earns the walk. Now Felix Cross can make his way down to second. And that's going to bring uh, the top of the order for Marion, Justin Massengale. First time up in the first, he flew out to center, earned a walk in the third, grounded out to first in the fourth. Here's the pitch to Massengale, in for a strike. Bases are loaded. Marion down two. They've just scratched and clawed their way back into this ball game as it was a 4 nothing lead after one for Texas. Swing on, swung on and a miss by Massingale. But they've hung around, and Texas has had plenty of opportunities to put this game away. They've had 12 hits, a lot of runners, but stranded a lot of runners as well. Here's the 0-2, bunted right back over the top to short, steps on second, throws to first, not in time, scores a run. And so they're gonna say that the runner going into second took out the shortstop as he tried to make the turn. The umpire at second is saying that the runner, uh, Massingale, is out simply because of the interference at second uh, on the runner. Marion scored one, so it's 7-6.
securing standing on third. It was Josh Griffin that went into second hard. Um, so he, that's the put out 6-4, or 4-6 uh, rather. So that's the first out of the inning. And then, because of the interference at second, Massingale is out on interference. So two down. And Vinny Rushing steps into the plates. We have timeouts. So I understood what Josh Griffin was trying to do, trying to buy some time for Massingale as he was going into second, but you can't obstruct and take them out. And that's exactly what he did. He was able to get a piece of the shortstop Ramirez as he come across the bag to make the turn, took him to the ground as a result of the contact. So. In Pony League Baseball, you can't do that. And uh, so that is what uh, uh, got the call for Massingale being out at first based on the interference at second. So two down now. Two runs have scored for Marion. They pulled to within one here in the top of the sixth. As we still have more confusion, home plate umpire Tim Walter has to talk to the head coach, uh, Fernando Torres. This game's pace has suddenly slowed down dramatically. The final game of the night was supposed to start at 8 o'clock. It'll be much later than that, maybe closer to 8.30, as we still have another inning to go. Here's the pitch from Sanchez. Misses inside, ball one. So Vinny Rushing is at the plate. Here's the pitch on the corner, catches it 1-1, one, one, the count. Pitch from Sanchez, catches that outside corner once again. Two, two. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Swing on a miss, gets the strike out of rushing, and that ends the sixth inning. Here we go as we head to uh, the bottom of the sixth inning. It is a seven to five lead for Texas, but they come to the plate here in the bottom of the sixth. It's gonna be uh, leading off Rafael Capistran Jr., the center fielder, Singled in the first, walked in the second, walked in the fourth. He scored three times in the game. On the mound for Marion is number 13, Josh Griffin, I believe. It is. That pitch in there for a strike. This is in the bottom of the sixth inning. Two and one the count now to Capistran Jr. Josh Griffin, pitch, hits the dirt, three and one. So defensively for Marion, it's Holland, Cross, Dilde in the outfield, Massing, Kofer, rushing Dyer on the infield, and Trochi behind the plate as Capistran gets the walk to lead things off here in the bottom of the sixth. Garza, Herberto Garza steps in. He reached on an error in the first, singled in the second, grounded out in the fourth, and he takes strike one here in the bottom of the sixth. There is the opening ceremonies, the team meeting taking place here in the um, between, in between games, there's still one more game for the night as the uh, ball's driven in the gap in uh, right field. Uh, Garza is held to a single nice play by Dilday to get over and cut that off, but it does drive Capist Capistron 
to third. So now Texas has runners first and third with no body out. So up next for Texas. is going to be Darren Ramirez, number 33, the second baseman. He hits from the left side. In this game so far, he singled in the first, flew out to center back in the second, and then tripled in the fourth. Runners first and third for Texas. 7-5 the score here in the bottom of the sixth. Texas looking to expand that, extend that lead. Both runners get big leads. Here's the 1-0. A little bit low, and on the delayed steal, it's Garza making his way down towards second. They're going to give him the stolen base. I guess that would call catcher's indifference. So now two runners in scoring position. Here's the pitch from Griffin. Gets the inside corner for a strike, two and one. Base hit, scores two, 7-5. Here's the pitch, fouled off. Right at the plate. On deck, number 22, that is Emmanuel Garza. Seven twenty Central Time. Here's the pitch, curveball in. Oh, just misses. That looked good from here. Counts full now. Here's the pitch. Granted, right side at first baseman. They come home, and he's safe. As I think the first baseman thought there was a force, and it is Capistran that scores. On the play from first, fielder's choice. Herberto Garza advances to third. Emmanuel Garza steps into the plate with nobody out. Fouled off. It'll be a brief parade of players coming up here in just a little bit. As I see the uh, team from the Netherlands just below us, they pick up their gear bags. They have to go out and stage in center field. 0-2 the count. Here's the pitch on the corner. Strike three. Gets the strikeout of Garza looking and that's the first out here in the bottom of the sixth inning good pitch by Josh Griffin Third base, number 14. here's our virtual Maladon Maladonado he steps into the right side of the batter's box runners at first and third Eight to five lead here for Texas. We've got timeout called by plate umpire. Tim Walter. Pitch way high. Eight to five. Here's the pitch as they throw down towards second. Stolen base. Catchers in different, well, I guess it's a stolen base as they made a play by Ramirez. So now the runners are at second and third with one out. Josh Griffin on the mound for Marion.
pitch in there for strike. Catches the inside corner. Here's the 2 1. Lined into a left center field. Cut off by the left fielder. That is Holland. Does a nice job getting the ball in. However, Texas is able to score one as Garza comes in to score on the single by Mal Maldonado. And now the lead is 9-5 to five here in the bottom of the sixth. Conferences have broken up. Everybody's heading back. The coaches to the dugout. Set the stage here. One down in the bottom of the sixth. We have runners at first and at third for Texas. Ramirez at third. Maldonado at first. Maldonado takes off for second. They have him in a rundown, but they're not really worried about him. As he's able to get back in, they were watching uh, the runner at third to make sure that they held him up. So at the plate is Bentecourt. Brandon Matthew Bentecourt for Texas. The pitch low. They've got Maldonado caught in a run down. They get the tag on him, and that is going to be the second out. As a nice throw by Trokey is able to uh, keep him from advancing. Two down. So there's two down now. Runner at third. No balls, one strike, two outs. The pitch from Johnson curves in there for a strike. 71 mile an hour curveball. It's pretty neat to see all those players out toward right center field from all the different com countries. Ball high. Pushes the count to one and two. Here's the one-two pitch just outside, two and two. They're all out there underneath the flag, the American flag, but all the flags of all the countries, the Netherlands, Korea, Mexico, strikeouts and throw them out as they get the strikeout. That ends the sixth inning. We're in the top of the seventh here. The last opportunity for Marion to... Uh, Tying this up, or maybe even take the lead. It's nine to five, Brownsville, Texas. The prospects lead it, and it's uh, Renee Sanchez on the mound to try and close this thing out for Fernando Torres, Renee Sanchez, Oscar Betancourt, and the entire Brownsville team. As pitch in there for a strike, runs the count to one and one. Hitting for Marion is Cannon Delde. He was the starting pitcher for Marion. Been playing right field most of the game. Where's number 10? Bats from the left side. And in the game, he had a double in the first, struck out in the third, struck out in the fifth, and he's batting here in the seventh. Two balls, one strike. Pitch bounces in there from Sanchez. Sanchez wears number six. Here's the 3-1. Driven to center field in the air. Here comes Capistron. He makes the catch for one out here in the seventh inning. One down, down to the final two outs. 
Brings up Parker Holland to the plate, the left fielder. He grounded out in the first, walked in the third, grounded out in the fifth. When you look at the line score, just five hits for Marion in the game. Five runs on five hits, four errors. That's been the killer for Marion. As you look at the line for Texas, nine runs, 15 hits, one error. One ball, no strike counts. Now one and one to Parker Holland. As Renee Sanchez steps up on the mound, throws from the first base side, pitches the line right up the middle on the ground, 71 mile an hour, taken right back up the middle. So life for Marion here as Parker Holland gets a single on the base hit for Marion. This is going to be a pinch hitter for Marion. It's going to be number nine, Lucas Will, who is hitting for Michael Dyer. Pinch hitting for Marion, Illinois. Number nine, Lucas Will. Will checks into the game here in the seventh. Where's number nine? So with one down, still live for Marion. Runner at first, pitch outside from Sanchez. Don't forget there's one more game tonight. It'll be the finale, and that's going to be between Southern Illinois, the all-star team, and Mexico. Pitch down the middle for a strike. Count two and one now to Will. Lucas Will hits from the right side. 2-1 pitch. Ooh, just missed. Outside. As Lucas Will, he takes ball four and makes his way towards second base. So Parker Holland heads to second. Lucas Will gets the walk, heads to first. And life still for Marion. They're down four, nine to five. Riley Kofer is going to be at the plates.
So back here at Ritwan Park, Daniel Ramirez in to pitch. To try and close this thing out for Texas. They have a four run lead. And stepping into the plate is going to be Riley Kofer. Number two, struck out in the second, walked in the third, walked in the sixth and scored. Pitches outside, bounces. They try to throw in behind the runner at second. That is uh, Holland. He's able to get back in. As the pitch is in there for a strike. Garcia is the pitcher. Ball gets away. Runners are able to advance. Holland heads to third. Lucas Will goes to second. Pitch is in there for a strike. Two and one with one out here in the top of the seventh. So Ramirez. Armando Garcia, rather, is the pitcher. Here's the 3-2 on the way. Looks back towards second, spins, forces Lucas Will to dive back in head first, but no throw. Here's the 3-2. It's on the way. On the ground, hit foul, third baseline. Three two pitch driven in to right field right fielder camps under it makes the catch two down gets the ball in quickly as Holland is going to score on the sacrifice by Riley Kofer. Two down though. Back to a uh, three run lead for Texas. Ryan Trunke is the last hope for Marion here with two outs in the top of the seventh. Nine to six. As the pitch came inside. writing in my scorebook and just caught the tail end of that. Didn't see actually where it is. Now, Chokey's acting, uh, shaking his hand like he got hit on the hand. And it's possible he did. And it's still, it hit the bat, so they're calling it a strike. It was a foul ball. Even if it hits the hand, it's a foul ball if it's on the bat. Pitch is outside, moves the count to one and one. And that appears to be what happened. I looked up and Trokey's laying on his backside. But the count is one and one now with runners, with a runner at second, and that is Lucas Will as Trokey fouls one off to the right, up onto the concourse level. Good crowd here this evening, wanting to stick around and watch the Southern Illinois team take on Mexico. That's the, the next game. There is a Parade of teams coming up in between games here. 
Curveball high. Hangs up for Garcia. Armando Garcia. Fidel Armando Garcia Jr. Bounces one in, and that's going to let Lucas Will make his way to third. So here's the 3-2, swung on a missed, and that is going to be the ball game.